So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the very kind invitation to be here in this uh, beautiful city, Istanbul. So thank you for having the opportunity to share a little bit of knowledge coming from uh, Leuven, Belgium. Probably a lot of uh, what I will discuss is already said in one of the previous slides, so it will be a kind of summary. So, but what I would like to discuss is that PFO goes beyond cryptogenic stroke. And the thing is, and that has not been touched during the previous speak, uh, speakers, but uh, we have to keep in mind that there are, for the moment, three important prospective randomized trials comparing classical treatment versus PFO closure in patients with cryptogenic stroke with a superiority for PFO closure. It is published in New England uh, Journal of Medicine two years ago, the RESPECT trial, the REDUCE trial, and the CLOSE trial. So there is a certain evidence that patients who suffer from typical cryptogenic stroke diagnosed by a neurologist is maybe a good candidate to close the patent for amenovale. But as you can see, there is also another list of other disease progresses where you find more the PFO than you expected. And this has already be, been discussed the decompression illness. And you know, when a diver is going up too fast, there is um, the development of nitrogen bubbles. And if we look to the literature, you will see that the number of divers, divers with major diving accidents are significantly higher when compared to divers having no PFO. So PFO versus PFO. For some reason, there must be a kind of association between the two. And indeed, also the severity of the diving accidents is higher in the patients with the PFO. Look, it's almost uh, five times higher when you have a major diving accident when the PFO is present. And you can imagine the nitrogen bubbles, they are also formed in the arterial circulation, but they can be also formed in the venous circulation and then causing a paradoxical embolism entering into the systemic circulation. And this is translated in more days to stay in the decompression chamber. So there must be something. And it, there is even more, because the higher the right to left shunt, the more diving accidents you find in patients with PFO. I have to admit, this is, these are empirical data. This is found. This is, does not show associations. But I think there is, in a certain way, a kind of bell that starts to ring. A very recent paper looked prospectively to patients where the PFO was closed when they were at high risk. And this is one of the first trials. It's a pilot trial, not then that many patients. But it seems to be that you can prevent new diving accidents when you close the PFO when you are at high risk. Maybe this is a door that has to be opened and further research is needed. This is published quite recently in June 2019, and for the moment, is quite, it was quite difficult to go into detail uh, in this paper. But it seems to be that the story of diving and the presence of PFO is not finished. Another thing which has been discussed is migraine with aura. And indeed, if you look to patients with PFO, there is three times, sometimes five times more risk that the patient suffers from migraine with aura. But the opposite is also true. If you have a patient with migraine with aura, you have more risk to find the PFO. So it goes in both directions. More PFO, more migraine, more migraine, more PFO. So again, and this is description, of course, we have to admit that from the scientific part, but it means that for some reason, yeah, there, there can be an association. And as discussed for, uh, earlier, probably vasoactive agents circulating in the venous blood, which might be serotonin, is not filtered by the lungs and goes directly to the brains, causing a migraine attack. There is another hypothesis that also microthrombi might enter into the circulation, the venous circulation, and then jumps into the systemic circulation, and microthrombi might cause migraine attacks. There are clear data on animal models, on rat models, where they just flushed microthrombi in a cerebral circulation of the rat, 
and you had some ECG uh, changes, which are also found in patients with migraine. So it's, it's a very interesting topic. Of course, we do know from retrospective trials and re let's say prospective, so prospective trials non-randomized, that indeed, in a lot of these patients where you close a PFO who suffered from cryptogenic stroke, because I think this is very important, that you have a resolution of migraine in 50%, 55% of the cases, and that you have an improvement of migraine attacks in about 14% of the cases. So it seems to be that when you close the PFO, that you influence in a certain way the migraine attacks. The thing is, you can say, okay, this is written in literature, but please ask your patients. They report this spontaneously. Doctor, I have to say something else. I don't feel the migraine anymore since you closed the PFO. And that's how, why the reason why all these people, famous people, started to report this in the literature, because there must be something. Unfortunately, we have a randomized controlled trial with a primary endpoint that was not reached. So and the primary endpoint was uh, defined as a responder rate, 50% reduction in migraine attacks. So it was a randomized controlled trial looking at PFO closure and no PFO closure in patients with PFO and suffering from migraine. But maybe, maybe this study was underpowered. That's always the problem with these prospective randomized trials. And in the sub-analysis, it seems to be that the number of headache days was significantly lower after closing the PFO than after not closing the PFO. So again, our gut feeling is that this right to left shunt has to deal in a certain way with uh, migraine and migraine with aura. This was also touched very briefly uh, when a patient has the platypnea orthodexia syndrome, when the patient is lying down, he's feeling well, and when he's sitting up, he's feeling unwell. And this is because the PFO is probably pulled open because of the position of the patient. Mostly in patients after the pneumectomy or in patients with pulmonary pathology, you find these things. And we, on a regular basis, we close the PFO because of this platypnea orthodexia syndrome, because in our center, we are doing a lot of pneumectomies. Obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. That's also something strange. But if you look to patients, and the patients with the PFO are indicated by, by the white bars, you do see that the desaturation index, I can call it like this, the desaturation index in patients with the PFO is much higher when compared to patients with no PFO or no lower desaturation indexes. So also here it seems to be that if there is more desaturation found in sleep apnea syndrome, it seems also to be that also these patients have more PFOs present. And remarkably, if you close in this patient population with sleep apnea syndrome, the PFO, the degree of desaturation decreases. If you leave the patients like they are, if they had no PFO before, then there is nothing to change when you follow them over time. So again, something that indicates that in our gut feeling, this right to left shunt, this time deoxygenated blood entering into the systemic circulation might influence the outcome of the patient. Together, PFO closure together with CPAP treatment, positive airway pressure breathing, all the parameters of quality of life changed extremely. So maybe by avoiding the desaturation during night, the patient is feeling better during the day. So this is also something that we cannot deny. But there is even more, and I'm now going to be a little bit futuristic, but also dementia, there are reports in the literature that dementia is based on systematic embolisms. Alzheimer dementia and vascular dementia, both of them. And if you just look to patients with a right to left shunt, although it didn't reach the statistical significance, I have to admit this, but you see that in patients with dementia, the right to left shunt was found in about 60% of the cases, where in the control groups, it was only found in 44% of the cases. So it seems to be 
that also the continuous right to left chance and maybe the continuous emboli uh, projected into the cerebral circulation causes more dementia in both Alzheimer and vascular dementia. But again, I'm not a neurologist. I'm not an expert on this part. And then, it has been briefly touched in the introduction, we put a lot of devices inside the body of a patient. So there is a pacemaker, there is an ICD, there is a CRT device, and so on. So a lot of, let's say, leads are going into the venous circulation. And it is, and we find this regularly when we perform, when we perform a transesophageal echo, we find clot formation on these devices on these leads. And if you follow the patients who have a PFO versus the ones who do not have a PFO, you do see that the number of TIA and strokes is higher in this population. So again, if there is something, something like clot formation, right left shunting, and more stroke and TIA. So the PFO seems to play a quite important role in this story. And then finally, we talked about thrombus. We talked about nitrogen bubbles. We talked about vasoactive agents that go from right to left. And again, we have quite strong scientific data for that. But there is also the problem of fat embolism, the problem of paradoxical embolism of solid particles and from air. If you go through the literature, and I just pasted a few headliners from journals, where you can see that in hip surgery, frequently you might have fat embolism. And for example, in our center, if they find a PFO with a quite large right to left shunt, they prefer to close it first, just to avoid a stroke at the moment of the intervention at hip level. Solid particles, suppose that your vascular radiologist want to close a fistula and injects these solid particles, but if they, these solid particles go through the fistula into the venous circulation, then suddenly enters into the systemic venous circulation, jumps into the systemic arterial circulation, and might cause stroke. So it's not the first time that on the, in the cat lab table of the vascular radiologists that they suddenly have a patient with a stroke based on this paradoxical embolism. And air, it's maybe a little bit an older one, but air, when neurosurgery was performed, when the patient was sitting up like this, during this neurosurgery, it could be possible that an air bubble enters into the circulation and could also provoke a paradoxical embolism based on air and then causing a TIA or stroke. So the thing is, in conclusion, because I had only 10 minutes, so in conclusion, PFO, allows right to left chant. That's for sure. We have shown this many, many, many times. And we can also prove that paradoxical embolism of thrombi, air, fat, solid particles, vasoactive agents, seems not to be that uncommon. So we have to keep this in mind. 27% of our patients do have a PFO. As a result, PFO might be related with maybe still unidentified health problems. And in some indications, PFO closure might be useful. And there are some data in the literature about that. So awareness of the presence of a PFO is, in my opinion, very, very important. Thank you very much.